Tim Ria here live with Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who just, uh, you hosted this really fascinating um, session on what's happening inside the military. We had Colin from iRobot, yeah. and I was really kind of curious to pick your mind on, on what you got out of that session. Well, you know, I, I remember when I was in medical school, one of my professors telling me that the greatest advances in medicine have come from the battlefield. And he, he always told the story about, even during the Civil War, you know, these doctors who would take care of five, ten patients at a time, and all of a sudden they had thousands of patients, and it forced so much innovation. And that always stuck with me, you know, from 20-some years ago. And so nowadays, you know, it's, it's all of that, you know, modern day on speed, so to speak, because you, you've seen it go both ways now. You've seen the forced innovation from the battlefield create what, some of the things that we've seen, but also the smart guys in this panel, Anmol Sood and Colin and Yulin and Skip, who are civilians, who are saying, okay, we want to take care of these, these people who are fighting off in foreign lands, and then also be able to take some of those things and apply it to civilian life as well. So it, it, was, it was really interesting for me. It's, it's interesting to see what transpires and what comes down the pipeline out of the military technology. The next question is, is we're just down in the pavilion area and we see all these different apps and devices. What do you see that's really turns into something useful that people actually use that helps their lives in this digital health space? That's a great, it's a great question. And you know, th there's always this thing I think in any technology, do you develop technology and then find a use for it? Or is the need driving the, the technology? And I think with some of these things, it's probably a little bit of both. I think people are very excited about this, and so some of it is we just want to develop the technology and then figure out how best to apply it uh, afterward. And the real question that everyone's going to ask and have started to ask is, does it make a difference? Does it make people healthier? I can tell you when it comes to a lot of the apps and a lot of the quantified self-movement, wearing the devices and everything, from a psychological standpoint, it does seem to make people care more about their health. So if nothing else, at least they're thinking about their health in a way that they didn't before. They're feeling more autonomous. They feel like they got some control. The second part of that, though, ultimately, is are they going to act on that? Are they going to? Is it, are the sensors and stuff accurate enough to, to actually force improved outcomes? We, and I don't know that we know that for sure yet. Yeah, because I was speaking with, with Sonny, who creates the shine with Misfit yeah. wearables, and he was saying it's, we're still really nascent in this space. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have gold standards in medicine. You know, we like to get the 12 lead EKG. We like to get the, the CAT scan and MRI of the brain. Yeah. We still like that. And I can tell you as a neurosurgeon, I mean, I want to see that data before I make big decisions on my patients. The idea that ultimately an infrared sensor on your head, a two lead sort of derived calculation from a wrist monitor could provide the same sort of thing. We're early on in that. I, I, now, the good news is I think we're going to get there. We, we have to get there. And ultimately, I think it's, everyone is going to become more their own best advocate. Every yeah. potential patient out there. Yeah, is, so we have to take care of ourselves. Yeah. They're going to be more engaged, as a, I think, as a result of this. And ultimately, you can, you can imagine a society where, because of all these devices out there, you could start to aggregate, in a very confidential way, tons and tons of data and be able to say that, look, people living in Las Vegas actually are more likely to develop X problems versus, you know, Carson City, you know, or, or whatever it may be. And, and you start to make some amazing non-intuitive uh, uh, conclusions as a result of this. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for your time, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, and we'll see you on CNN. Uh, I'll be there. Thanks for having me. Okay, cheers.